So John Giles is with us. Evening, John. Evening, Nathan. Over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about some of the great managers of the era that you played in, Bill Shankly, Matt Busby, Jock Steen. And tonight we're going to talk about Don Revy, uh, somebody yeah. who was a huge influence on your career, who was a, a fine footballer in his own right, a footballer of the year in 1955, and obviously went on to become a hugely successful manager at Leeds United, winning a couple of First Division titles, FA Cup, League Cup, and the Intercity Fairs Cup on two occasions as well. And we want to get your thoughts and your memories on what he was like as a man and as a manager. When you look back on your life now, John, how influential a figure was Don Revy in it? Oh, very, very, very influential, uh, Nathan. Uh, you know, I went to Manchester United as a, as a 15 year old uh, and worked under Ant Busby, who was one of the great managers uh, as well, different, obviously. Uh, and then I went to Don when I was 22. And uh, that was the, the time Don was manager of Leeds United, as everybody knows, uh, had been a player for Leeds United, uh, took over as manager of a second division team that was struggling, Nathan. No, and you talk about the great managers that we're going to talk about. With, uh, the, the way I judge managers, the great managers, is uh, what did they take over and what did they leave, Nathan? Mm. You know, and if you look at Don Revy, he took over a struggling second division team uh, who went on to win the trophies you just mentioned there. Uh, and uh, I, I think be, and made one of the one of the great teams in, in English football. That that would be my take on it. From what he what he took over to what he what he made was fantastic. Can we go back to before he even became Leeds United manager and his career as a player? I hadn't realised uh, just how good he was. That he was a, a footballer of the year and. Uh, a player that would be right at home in the modern game. He was uh, the sort of number nine who didn't score a huge amount of goals. He was a number nine who actually played in a far deeper role, yeah. so much so that uh, this position almost sparked a, a change in how English football was played. Yeah, yeah, it was different. Uh, what they call it the false nine now, mm. I think, uh, Nathan. And that, that's exactly what they did. And in, th in those days, they made a big deal of it because he 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 he, he was a midfield player anyway. Uh, but the fact is, he wore number nine. You know, in those days, you played in your position. If you were number two, you were right back. Three, you were left back. Uh, not like today, where it's it's you, you wouldn't be able to tell by the numbers. So Don wore the number nine, but but played in a deep position in a very very good Manchester City team. And he was player of the year. Uh, uh, I think it was around that time you mentioned 1954-55, was it? Yeah, 1955. 1955, and they won the cup in, in was it 55 or 56? 56 then, City won the FA Cup. Yeah, so they were a very, very good team. Some terrific players in it, Bobby Johnson and uh, the Bert Troutman, the, the German goalkeeper. Um, no, they were, they were a very, very, very classy team at that particular time, and he was a very, very classy player. So that role, and it ended up being called the Revy plan of the number nine playing in a more deep-lying role. Mm. Was there somebody then playing further ahead of him, or was he expected to do both jobs, to, to get himself involved, to be a creator, but also to be at the end of things? Um, well, as you say, he didn't score that many goals. No, he, he wasn't expected to. He was a midfield player in that position. He had a lot called Bobby Johnson, who was a Scottish player, uh, was a terrific player. And uh, they had a centre forward as well. I can't think of his name at the moment. A lot of good players, but Bobby Johnson was a terrific player, a little guy, uh, played up front, uh, uh, Scottish international. So Dom was the was a deep line centre forward, as as they called it in those days. As you say there, I don't think he scored that many goals, but he made a lot of goals. He was a brilliant distributor of the ball, and a, a good football and brain. There was a lad called Ken Barnes, played with him in the middle. He was a terrific player as well. And they were a, a good midfield duo, as they called them in those days. But he was a very, very stylish player. Good distributor, good pass to the ball. Saw a good pass in that. Uh, and, and be attractive to watch mm. as well. He had started out at Leicester and Hull and then spent five seasons at Manchester City in the first division. Went on to play for Sunderland before signing for Leeds towards the latter end of his career. And went on at a very young age then, at just 33, to become the Leeds United manager. What are your first memories of speaking with Don Revy or meeting with Don Revy? 
Um, well, the first time I met him, uh, uh, Nathan, was when I was on the transfer list. I think I went on the transfer list on a Tuesday at Manchester United, and he, he came over to see me on the Thursday. So uh, he didn't waste any time anyway. No. Uh, and he came over, and obviously he would have agree- had agreed terms uh, on the phone with, uh, with Sir Mask. And uh, it was just now I was in training. Uh, 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 Sir Matt Busby said, uh, Leeds United, I've agreed terms with Leeds United, and Don Reeve is coming over to see you on Thursday morning. And that was it. Had you any choice in it? Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have to go to yeah. Leeds, uh, Nathan. And, uh, you did, know, he, did he have uh, to convince you? Um, a little bit, but not a lot. I, need, I think, it, you know, well, I... I, I my take on it was, well, I'll judge it when I meet him. Mm. Uh, the second division team. Um, like you think well, a, lot of, a lot of people said to me, my father included, what are you doing going to a second division team? Uh, well, when I spoke to Don, Don Reavy, first of all, I knew um, from Christmas to the end of the season, Leeds came with a very, very good run for promotion, Nathan. Yeah. They finished fourth, right? So that was, a, that was a good sign in itself. And the biggest sign was that Bobby Collins was there. Bobby Collins was a great Scottish player who played for Celtic, had a great career at Celtic, and played for Everton for five years, and then came to Leeds, I think maybe the, only the year before. And I knew then that Leeds came with a run from uh, Christmas to the end of the season and finished fourth. So I knew they were doing something right, and I knew if Bobby Collins was there, they had to be doing something very right. Mm. So that was the influence. That, that were the two influences. Uh, like, I'd rather join a second division team at the time doing something than a first division team not doing anything, you know? But when, you, when you're moving, Nathan, with any player, it's a gamble. Mm. You know, you never know. What, I, ne- I would never foresee or foresaw what Leeds United would do over the, over the 12 years I was there. You know, I just thought at the time, because you're taking a chance on it. And I was prepared to take a chance on it because of I knew he was a new manager. He'd had a good run the year before, and Bobby Collins was there. They were, they were my main reasons that I thought they look like they're doing something. It's a gamble on both sides because that was a time when squads were very small and there wasn't a huge amount of money going around the game. So when you brought somebody in, you needed them to deliver. And he seemed to have a brilliant ability to spot talent, whether you know, it was bringing the best out of Billy Bremner and Paul Reaney, Norman Hunter, or developing younger players like Peter Larmor. He did seem to have a, a magical ability to spot talent and be able to help it progress. Oh, definitely. But I didn't know that at that time. Mm. <laughs> you know, I didn't know about uh, Eddie Gray and Peter Lorimer and, and the players that were athletes. I knew Bobby Collins was there, so that's what I'm saying. You take a cha- it's a, it's a gamble, uh, and it, from from my point of view, it was a great gamble because uh, when I, when I got there and, and in time, obviously uh, the players that were there, Paul Madeley came into the team, Terry Cooper came into the team. Like there was a few players still uh, already there. Paul Reaney was there, uh, Billy Bremner was there. Uh, Norman Hunter was there, uh, but we had a lot of other players that that I didn't uh, know about yeah. at that time. Like we bought Alan Peacock, lad called Jim Story, Tom Weston, Ian Lawson. Uh, they were there uh, at the time, but I didn't know anything about them. Well, they weren't, there, and they also weren't the players that they, that we remember them as now. They were all just starting out. The success exactly. was still to come. Yeah, exactly, and they were good players. We were in the second division. But I think what Don did from the start, he created a spirit in the team and in the club, which was very, very professional. Uh, and what, 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 where he was lucky as well in some, some days, he played for Leeds, right? At a the time, they weren't doing very well at all. Mm. It was a bit of a mess, to be quite honest, uh, Nathan. And uh, actually, he was going to a, a club as a manager. And uh, the chairman decided, because apparently the chairman was asked what was he like, and he gave him a great recommendation. And I think when he was gone, the chairman thought, well, if he's that good, why am I letting him go? Right. <laughs> so he kept him on as manager. Yeah. So Don, Don had a bit of a start. In other words, he knew the players that were there, the players that, they, that, that he didn't need. Actually, they weren't a good group of players. They weren't, you know, they weren't very professional. 
uh, and he ha- he he knew that because he, he played alongside him. So he got rid of them very 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 quickly, right? And then he got some new players in, uh, and then brought brought the young players in. There was, there was at that time there was Paul Paul Reaney, uh, Norman Hunter, Terry Cooper came into the team. Billy was was there already, but was but was young. Uh, so that w- that was the start for him, but he but he but he had a player I mentioned at the start that people wouldn't remember now, but he always had from the start a good work ethic. When he you got Bobby Collins in as an example on the pitch and off the pitch in training, uh, so he, he made those things the, the the discipline, training, the basic stuff to start with. And then, as it went on, the night, and he, he he created a great spirit uh, in the club. How and, did he do that, John? Well, when I well, I, I played for Manchester United, and this was after the Munich Air disaster, where a lot of players weren't supposed to be babes were in the team, you know. So the spirit went out of Manchester United a lot after the Munich Air disaster, Nathan. So I wasn't I wasn't used to to. They didn't have a really good spirit at Manchester United. But when I went to Leeds, he he went out of his way to uh, have sort of get-togethers with the players and their wives. And that's most unusual in football. It might, might not be now, but it was in those days. And he created a spirit there that I hadn't noticed. I never never saw at Manchester United. And when I saw it first, you know, they had a, a Christmas due for the for the, the, the wives and the kids and things like that. And I thought, this is a bit odd. I've never seen this before. But it worked. He did get the, 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 the spirit in the club. He called it a family spirit. Mm. And he went out of his way to do that. You know? So he'd, so, he'd, he'd, when you'd arrive at training, you know, he'd have conversations about, about your wife, about the kids, about how things are going at home. He, he, oh, he, he did, yeah, he cared. knew. What, what, he knew the wives. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They, 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 when I went first there, they had a pre-season due, you know, where they had the directors uh, along in that. And, uh, you, you, you know, they, they just created something that I hadn't seen before, certainly at Manchester United. There were, and, a lot, and he had a lot of young players then that he was bringing into the team eventually, you know, and he called it like a, a, a family spirit, which I was a bit sceptical about, to be honest. Uh, being at Manchester United, there was no family spirit there at all you know so and, and that's what he did and, and got it gone and obviously then created on the pitch a spirit Nathan you know from day one when I was in, when we were in the second division from day one there was a spirit about the players on the pitch home and away never give in uh, you, you hear them now what, what, what do we call it now pressing yeah. high press and all that like Leeds were doing that from the time I went to Leeds in other words they were very, very difficult to beat from day one. Very, very difficult to beat uh, because the, the the spirit in the team and the work rate in the team, he established that before I got there. But it was, it was very noticeable when I got in the team at that particular time. Like all great managers, he was very much his own man and he had grand ambitions and wasn't willing to shake things up. Like Leeds United used to wear blue jerseys, but... He decided they were going to wear white jerseys because of the success Real Madrid were having. Yeah, oh, there, there was white jerseys when I went there. Right, that had already he'd happened. He made that when he te- took over as manager mm. the previous season. Uh, so when I got there, it was uh, it was it was white jerseys. That that was the ambition he had, and uh, that was the type of thing he did. You know, the, the, like he was he was that training every day. He was on the pitch every day. Uh, again, when I go from Manchester United, now the Manchester United. Pre Munich was a different story altogether because he had the best players and and one of the the great teams of all time uh, and one of the great managers of all time, Matt Busby. But after the Munich disaster, it, it changed a lot. You know, there was uh, it, it it wasn't the Busby babes mm. for a long time after that. You know, there was a lot of players that were brought in uh, into the team. Uh, you know, for example, when 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 I was after the Munich air disaster, Harry Gray had had been in the team just before the Munich Air disaster. But Noel Cantwell had come into it, Morris Setters, Paddy Credit, Dennis Law, David Heard. It, it wasn't the Busby Babes anymore. Do you yeah. know what I mean, Nathan? That spirit had gone uh, from the club. He got it back later on, a little, a little bit later on. He brought players like Nobby Stiles and, and Johnny Aston and Georgie Best into the team. 
So when, when I went to, to Leeds, I hadn't come from a club at that time that had a great spirit in the dressing room, you know? In terms of what he did on the pitch then and the style of football and, you know, we've spoken about it through the years of the dirty Leeds tag, how you would feel it was very unfair, that there was definitely a, a one-in-all-in attitude that you had each other's back, but it really underestimated the style of football. You talked there about the high press, uh, which I don't think any other team was maybe doing in English football at the time and, and his thoughts on the game and and how it should be played. And again, a lot of that seems to be judged in, in the context of Brian Clough and Rouse they would have had on on TV shows. It was was he very set in how he wanted the game to be played? Oh, was he very idealistic? Definitely, definitely. I mean, he he he, he, he created his, his spirit. Again, the high press you see today, I'd say Leeds were one of the first teams to do that in the manner in which we did it. And the, and the, 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 the amount of work we put into it at that particular time, Nathan. And was that work, John, was that tactical work or was that fitness work? Because for that high press, as we see with all the great modern team, you, you need to be fitter than everybody else. Yeah, well, well, Leeds were fit. Really, really fit. And uh, they, they, were, they were able to maintain that high press in all the matches, home and away, Nathan. You know, we, we, in those days, you were playing 42 matches. Uh, and I think we, we, we finished with three, lo- three losses. Only three, we only lost three matches in the team, mm. you know. And there was three teams going up. Uh, the Preston was one, and uh, Sunderland were the other. But we topped, we topped the league. Now, it, it, it would be fair to say it, it wouldn't have been particularly attractive to watch, especially away from home. Right. You know what I mean? It wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been attractive, but it was hugely effective in what we were doing. We didn't have great players. I mean, Bobby Collins was a great player and a great leader. Bobby was 32 at that time. Bobby Collins was hugely influential. But when Bobby played at Celtic and Everton, he, was, he put the effort in the way Don expected the, the young lads to do it. So he was an example to everybody in training and on the pitch. Bobby Collins was hugely influential. But he had Will and Guyers with him, you know? Like Don Weston and, and uh, Jim Story, lads you wouldn't have heard, Ian Lawson. Mm. These were the forwards. And they would run after everything, Nathan. We made it hell for nearly all the teams we played against. And in implementing that, John, was that Don Revy on the training ground every day leading the training sessions? Yes. Yeah, Don was on the training ground every day. Every day. And then you had a man called Sid Owen, who had been a terrific footballer at Luton, footballer of the year, uh, was, was one of the coaches, and Les Cocker was one of the coaches' trainers. Uh, they'd be there. Sid Owen looked after the young lads. He brought Paul Madeley and Terry Cooper and Norman Hunter through. He did a great job for Leeds. And uh, Les Cocker took the training. But Don would be there every day. Every day, no messing around the training, everything done properly, professionally, uh, and it, it with, a, with a good spirit about the whole business, Nathan. And when we played, it was everybody gone, 100%. Every match, 100%, 100%. Weren't particularly attractive to watch, but again, hugely effective in the match. We only lost three matches out of 42 mm. to, to, win, to, to win top of the league. And, and, and then... We took that, or Don took that, into the first division. That's where we got the reputation. You know what I mean? Now, that was one of the reasons. I mean, in those days, it was tough stuff. Uh, that, and that was like you could commit grievous bodily harm without getting a yellow card mm. in those days. So, uh, you know, all the teams, we, we, we had the reputation, all right, but all the teams had play, tough nuts. How did he I, deal with that reputation? He, he didn't like it. Because he, he didn't think, think we got the credit that we should have got for, for, for the matches we played and played well, you know? And that, and that, that would be true as well. Because in mm. those days, as you say, you had, I mean, Everton, for example, Jimmy Gabriel, Sandy Brown, Johnny Morris. I'm only mentioning a couple of names who were tough nuts. I mean, United had Dennis Law and obviously started Bill Fox mm. and, and, and those days. Peter Story is at Chelsea, Eddie McCready, Chopper Harris, Peter Osgood. Like all teams had, it wasn't just Leeds. You, had, you, you couldn't get a yellow card. You could, it was very, very difficult to be sent off. And why do you think then it was your Leeds team that had that reputation? Well, we came into the first division 
And from day one, uh, Nathan, we were near the top of the league, winning matches. At Man- we won at Manchester United. Uh, we won at Burnley. We were good teams. And the, like, the Leeds team did get s- stuck in, you know. But what happened then, as well then, I think the Football Association, after a year or two we, when we were playing at Leeds, they brought out a list of clubs uh, and with the, with the worst record, you know, of, of send-offs. Yeah, and fair play list. Yeah, but they took the, the, the juniors, <laughs> the juniors, into, into, into that particular situation. And our juniors must have been tough guys because they finished, they, we, we finished top of the, 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 the sending-offs and, and yellow cards. But, but it was mostly through the club. It wasn't, it wasn't just the, it wasn't the first team. You know, yeah. And and look at all the clubs. You wouldn't believe it in those days. You, you, you had to commit grievous bodily harm to get a yellow card. So we wouldn't we wouldn't lay down with anybody. And when we came into the into the first division, we started very well. You know, we won at, we won at Manchester. We won at a couple of places. Then we went to Everton in, in a match that uh, for the first time there was there was a clash, two clashes in the game. And it was the, the Everton supporters needed to get on the pitch, Nathan, because we had a reputation. But I think the Everton players were there that day to, sh- to tell, show us who were the real hard nuts. And but we we, did, we didn't back down to anybody. Uh, hard nuts, but is it was it true, John, that he hired ballet dancers to teach the players about balance? No, I, not in my time. <laughs> no. No, not in my time. You just blanked it out, maybe. No, 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 no. <laughs> Didn't my happen. Time. No, no. What happened with Don? Don got a got a, a rep. When you're winning, uh, Nathan, you you get all sorts of reasons why you're living, mm. winning. Do you know what I mean? And when we 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 became successful, Don got a reputation for away from home. We used to play bingo, right? Because when you're playing when away from home, you go home. You go the, the night before. There's nothing to do. Yeah. But anyway, we used to play bingo. So we got a reputation of playing, playing bingo. And we used to play bowls, you know, the carpet bowls. Yeah. Right, we used to do that. So after a while, when we became successful, one of the reasons, according to the papers, that we... we, we if, and, and it used to get... Uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the players that we were playing against, you know, the, the, the players did this and players did that. So there was three things that we did. But... When we got the successful, it was put down in the papers a lot that the reason we were successful because we played bingo and we played carpet balls. That happens in football. And then when Don went with the England team later on, they weren't successful. And the reasons they weren't successful is because they were playing balls and bingo. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it had nothing whatsoever to do with with. It was it was just a bit of fun and that. But when, whatever you do when you're successful, people say that's the reason they were successful. So and Don was got got the credit for that when we were winning the Leeds. And when he went to England, they weren't, and they, that was, he was blamed for that. But he, but he what he did, you know, he created a good spirit, and he collected good players, honest players. In the early days, we we had players early on, Jim Story and Ian Lawson and that. Down Weston, they weren't top-notch players, but they, they, by God, they had to go. Uh, how did they he do that, go. John? How that did stayed he stayed with the club when we got better players in? You know what I mean? That mm. spirit, that basic stuff, stayed with the club as long as Don was there and I was there. How did he get the best out of you? Was it a, a an arm around the shoulder? Was it a kick up the backside when needed? What was it that he did that motivated you to become the player you you became? Um. Well, I, I signed me as a right winger, right? Because I was, I was, I was, I, I hadn't got on very well with Matt Busby, and when I asked for a transfer, he, he said without any hesitation, uh, "You're on the list." So, uh, when I, I, but I was always a midfield player, Nathan. But when I went to to, to Leeds, I was I, I was playing on the wing, right wing. So he signed me as a right winger, but I knew Bobby Collins was there, right? And. Uh, what happened to me at Manchester United, I tried to do a job at Manchester United that I wasn't ready for. We played in the semi-final club against Spurs, against uh, Dave McKay and Danny mm. Blanche, fought this great Jimmy Greaves, and we got a hiding uh, 3-1. And I was terrible. I had a very, very bad game. And Matt gave up on me. 
after that, he just he just gave up on me. He, he, he never spoke to me, uh, never said what I did wrong. Anyway, I, so I knew I had to leave, which I did. So I was playing on the right wing at that time. So when Don bought me, he bought me as a right winger. Right In the semi-final of the cup I played in, I tried to do a job that I wasn't able to do, Nathan. I was only 19 or 20 at that time. I played very badly. So when I went to with Leeds, Don, uh, Bobby Collins was doing that job. I played on the right wing. And Bobby Collins, after a couple of years, got injured. And I moved into that position. And I was ready for it at that particular time. So um, I played on the right wing. And it wasn't like Manchester United. It wasn't, you weren't getting a lot of the ball to your feet. Mm. You know, there was a lot of hard work in it. And, and that was okay. And I did that. Uh, and we got promotion. And then we, we got, had a very, very good first division. We got to the FA Cup final and we finished runners up in the league to Manchester United. So that was all part part of it. And from my case, I was I was doing a certain job on the right wing that wasn't the same as Manchester United. There was a lot of tucking in, defending, and all the things that Leeds United did at that particular time. He was hugely successful and I went through the role of honour and the two league titles but there was also a lot of near misses there was you know finishing second in the first yeah. division on five occasions uh, runners up in the FA Cup three times uh, runners up in the European Cup Winners Cup how did he deal with losing? Um, well, it, it, it sounds worse than it was Nathan when you, when you read it out like that right because first of all, we won the second division, went into the first division. Now, most teams, actually, I think two of the teams that we went into the first division was Preston and Sunderland. And I think two of them were relegated that following season. We finished runners-up in the league on goal difference mm. with Manchester United. And we got into the FA Cup, right? And we're beaten an extra time by Liverpool in the first season, Nathan. Right now, if you don't get into the cup final, you don't lose. You don't. You don't come out as a loser. And when you finish runners up in the league, you could finish up as runners up in the league. But if you take it in the in the context that it was, Leeds United were pretty much the same players as we had in the second division. Right, get the first team ever to get sixty points or more and not win the league, and get to the cup final and beat an extra time by a great team, a great Liverpool team. Right, so that goes down in your record as runners up. But it was a rem- tremendous performance to do that. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. if you don't get if you don't get to a cup final, you're not runners up in the cup final. If you don't finish second in the league, you're not runners up anywhere. You could be fighting relegation. I mean, the two teams that we came up with were fighting relegation. We, we're going to Wembley. We're getting second in the league. First team ever to get sixty points or more. So, so. It, like instead of looking at it in, in the way the consistency of Leeds at that time, I think we run, we run the league twice with runners up five times or something. And in those days, it wasn't like the top four, or the top three. There was loads of good teams that could win the league at that particular time. So what Don did with the players that he had was unbelievable, uh, Nathan. You know, like later on, uh, like we swapped the players that I mentioned early on for Alan Clark and Mick Jones. And then the young Eddie Gray, Peter Lorimer came into the first team. You know, it got better and better and better as we went along. But we were never out of it. We were in, in the league, in the, in the European competitions for 10 years. When he decided to leave John to yeah. take the England job, was there a sense that it was coming to a natural end? He'd been there over a decade or... Was there a hope amongst the players that he that he might even turn down England and stay? Because like it's a group that went on to reach a European Cup final twelve months later. Yeah, I I I I think if you look back on it, I think he made a mistake, Nathan. As you say, I mean we just won the league for the second time. Mm. Like he was gone, we got into the European Cup final next year. We, we, there was no reason why we, we, we why we couldn't have gone on and won the league again. I think. Uh, I think he made a mistake, and, and I'll tell you why, Nathan. I think when he had the lads for as long as he had, uh, I think he sort of took it for granted a little bit. And uh, going with the England team, uh, I don't think he looked at it in a way 
that he could have looked at it, in my opinion. Because when he was with Leeds, we had uh, Eddie Gray, Scottish, Peter Lorimer, Scottish, Billy Bremner, Scottish, Joe Jordan, Scottish, Gordon McQueen, Scottish, me, Irish. Like, he had a far better selection of players with Leeds than he had with England. They weren't in the same class. I mean, he had he had Norman Hunter, he had Paul Madeley, he had Terry Cooper, and he had the lads who weren't English. That so he couldn't pick them for England. Mm. Like Leeds' team, the Lydia squad, was far stronger than the England squad. And I only I think he only realised that when he when when he he got the best English players and went in the same class as the Leeds team. Do you think he realised that quite quickly? I think so. I think so. Because when he went with, the, like, he, he'd, he'd been with the Leeds lots for years, and he had, and, and, and also he had, they were day to day. You know what I mean, Nathan? Mm. When you've got an, an England, uh, sorry, a squad in England, as he had with England, you only ha- see, can get those players every so often. It's a different game altogether, Nathan. You know, I, funny enough, I, I, I was manager of the Irish team before he was manager of the England team. Right. Now, I'm not comparing myself with Don Reavy, but I, I recognise straight away with the, the, with, the, with, the, with the Irish lads. Mm. Because in those days, you're, you're only, some, some matches you're only meeting them on the day of the match. So you couldn't do, with the England, the, sorry, the international setup, what you can do at club level. And Don was a, a day-to-day man train and train and train and doing this, doing this every day. He didn't have the benefit of that. And I don't think he realised that when he took on the England job. He only had them every so often. They're coming from different clubs with different habits. Didn't he? And he didn't have the same quality of player. And I think he, I think he, he re, obviously realised it fairly quickly that he couldn't do day-to-day stuff with an international team. And he didn't have the players. The players weren't as good selection of players he had weren't as good as the England lads because we had a lot of Scottish players a couple of Welsh lads and myself Irish in it that he couldn't pick for the England team it didn't work out for England and it still ended in a lot of controversy even though there was a, an expectation he was going to leave anyways he took a big money deal to go to the United Arab Emirates and it caused a huge amount of damage to his reputation in England yeah. Yeah. W- was money an important factor in his life, always? Yes, I think so. Right. I think so. And, and, and the strange thing, like in, in those days, I mean, like no player, but he was there in the 20, 20 quid a week. I mean, there was no player, even when the maximum wage was abolished in my time, could retire financially secure. Right. And none of the managers could either. I mean, we come to them all in, 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 in every Thursday, I think, at night, and to talk about them. But they didn't, Don, despite his success at Leeds, wasn't financially secure. Because, again, if football is a strange game, I mean, people would assume that Don got on like a house on fire with the directors. I don't think that was the case. There was a lot of resentment, in my opinion, because Don became real boss, real boss, because managers, had, they still do, I think, but in those days had a hard time with directors. Mm. Don didn't start off very well at Leeds and had a hard time with them. And when he got on top, uh, I think they, 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 he was real control of the club. And I don't think he got on very well with them. And the only thing they had, he had, they had control of was his money. And I don't, I don't think Don, on, the, on the, 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 the 12 years or four, 12, 14 years he was at Leeds, I don't think Don was financially secure at the end of that 14 years. For my generation, when we think of that time, Don Revy, it's always alongside Brian Clough and it's based on the television interview or the movie. And on the one hand, it's the lovable rogue of Clough and the real dour Revy on the other side. When you look at that and and people's impression of Don Revy, how how do you feel as to how he's thought about now? He died at a very young age. He died at 61 in 1989. But how people look back on that era and look at Revy's place in it, say, in comparison to Clough? Um, Well, first of all, he wasn't dour at all. He had a great sense of humour. Right. He was great with the lads. You know, he was... was, 
I, I think he always did what he could for the lads at a time when clubs weren't decent to lads. Mm. I think his hands were tied, but he did the best that he could with the thing. I mean, the club situation, uh, he, he, he didn't handle things well in many cases. I mean, he went on the thing with, with the, 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 the debate with Brian Clough. Yeah. And he shouldn't have gone near him. Shouldn't have gone near him. Brian Clough came into Leeds for 44 days and made a right mess of it. And what he said about Don Revy, well, you didn't, you didn't win the league in style. This is all rubbish. And this was typical Clough. And I think Don should have ignored it. So he made a mistake there. I think in the way in which he left England was a mistake as well. Mm. I think he handled that badly and left it open uh, for people to criticise him. There's no doubt about that. So he made a couple of mistakes in that way. But if you look at the overall picture, I mean, what he did at Leeds over the, over the years, uh, coming into a second division, they were always a second division, maybe a couple of years in the first division, weren't in a, 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 a football country, Nathan. You know, no support, really. I mean, my first match for Leeds in the second division, I think there was 14,000 at the match. Now, he had to build that up to what he did to play in Europe and win European trophies from nothing. Nothing. And, what, and, and the way you judge a man here, in my opinion, what did he take over and what did he leave? And if you look what he did at Leeds, I mean, he created a, 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 a tremendous team, won trophies, uh, Actually, he won as many trophies as Bill Shankly did. Mm. And though people forget that because people say, well, oh, you were runners-up and that. But to be runners-up takes a bit of doing as well. So I think Don's, Don Don didn't... He made a few bad choices, I think, going on with Clough on the, on the television. Because Clough was brilliant on the television. Yeah, he was a showman. Oh, he was brilliant at it. Don wasn't. And he, I think he made look Don bad. It made him look bad on the on that particular interview. He shouldn't have gone on with him. Did, did you watch that, John? Like it's, it's incredible. Oh, it's it's for, yeah. for, forty more than forty five, nearly fifty years on. Uh, yeah. it's still such a seminal moment. Do you remember sitting down to watch it that night? Yeah, I do. And I, I thought because what, what Clough was saying was uh Don says, Yeah, but we won we won the first division. Yes, but you didn't win it in style. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like style, what is that what that's supposed to mean? I mean we played some of the best football you've ever seen uh, it, later on it, uh, in Don, Don Rivers' career. If you look back on some of the matches, we played Southampton and beat them 7-1, seven, seven, I think it was. And it was exhibition stuff. Manchester United, two weeks before that, we did the same to them and beat them 5-0. And that. So Leeds played some fantastic football, but they had the reputation of being a tough team. And That was from the early days. And that was Clough. I mean, Clough come into Leeds and in 44 days... He ruined the club. Mm. He ruined the club. 44 days. You F and not. As far as I'm concerned, you can throw all your medals in the bin. What a cheek. He never won a medal when he played. I played against him. He was no great shakes. And he's telling us, Norman Hunter, if you'd have been a, 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 a dog, you'd have been... Oh, sorry, Eddie Gray. If you'd have been a horse, you'd have been put down years ago. This is from a fellow, Eddie Gray, brilliant player, who had very bad luck with, with, with injuries. Norman Hunter, you're a dirty so-and-so. And I know you'd love to be loved, wouldn't you? Norman says, I couldn't give an F. To, to me, the Irish man. Yeah. All of us. This is the first meeting with a team that had just won trophy to after trophy and just finished winning the league. And he's going on Don Telly to tell Don Revy they didn't win the league properly. Don should have, John should, should have totally ignored him. He lost it 44 days and he was gone. Glove. Don was there for 14 or 15 years winning League twice, as you mentioned earlier, the cup, first cup twice, league cup. Great uh, career in it to be listening to to Clough, big mouth. It's very sad that he died at such a young age and motor neuron just two or three years after he had finished up in management. Did you stay in touch during that time? Um, yeah, I, I went up to see him. Um, and, and we did a best. We did our best to organise a testimonial line. We, rock, we, we organised a testimonial line. I suppose myself and some of the lads. And uh, he didn't get a great crowd at that. Uh, uh, and, but but he, he, he lived up in Scotland, mm -hmm. so we didn't see much of him when he was ill, Nathan. You know, we went up a couple of times. We went to his funeral, of course, and there was, was uh, uh, there wasn't there wasn't that many from the football. 
in, 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 at, his, at his funeral. Nobody from the FA uh, had it. But um, no, it was very, very sad. Uh, I mean, what he did for the, for, the, for the lads that played for him. I mean, he was a great manager for us. And uh, the club went, none of the clubs were throwing money around at that time. But he did his best. He did his best to get us what he could, Nathan. So he was a real players' man. There's no doubt about that. I thought like he treated the players very, very well, uh, and he he, he 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 did whatever he could for us. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's incredible that no one from the FA turned up at his funeral. I think at the time there was reports that the FA chairman had sent letters to every club saying never to give him a job in English football again. Yeah. And, and I know, listen, there were various different allegations and things in those latter years about his relationship with the FA, but for nobody to turn up at his funeral from English football considering what a yes, giant so figure he was they, in the they English They treated game. him very badly. The FA crowd, what a mob they were. Uh, horrible, horrible mob. And uh, he, 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 he did the best, what he considered to be the best for himself at that particular time. It, worked, it didn't work out well going abroad and that. Well, he, he went and did his job over there, but uh, it, 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 he didn't handle it well. There's no doubt about that. But the FA themselves were horrible, horrible people generally anyway, and horrible to him and other managers as well look at Ralph Ramsey look at what he did with him mm. World, World Cup, Cup winner. winner finished up in a home, Ralph Ramsey nah, that, these are all things that are not, uh, we're not, we are, don't want to be talking about them now but the football managers and football people uh, were very badly treated uh, Nathan, up to fairly recently where uh, there's an independence now for the players financially to do whatever they want, uh, and that's good. Yeah, I suspect most of it, it's most going to be good. A... But in, in Don Reeves' day, he didn't have the, the advantage to do what some of the lads can do today. I suspect it'll be a common theme, John, over the next few weeks when we are talking about the managers of that era and how they were treated when they left their clubs. But uh, listen, it's been brilliant to talk about Don Revy and to spend the last sort of 40-45 minutes as to what sort of character yeah. uh, he was but and how important he was in your career Very important I think he was one of the great managers uh, Nathan to do what he did uh, at a period where or a situation in Leeds to, wasn't, Leeds was a cricket area in a rugby league area and he turned them into one of the best uh, soccer centres in the world really mm. and you can see you can see the the, the, the even to this day, the support at Leeds and the passion of the Leeds supporters. Well, Don Revy created that, and it's continued since Don was there. John, great stuff. We'll talk to you next Thursday. OK, Nathan, thanks. Football on Off The Ball. With Sky. Get more of the sports you love on Sports Extra with BT Sport and Premier Sports.